we've been looking for quite a while because we were looking before COVID and then COVID, like just before COVID, we were just seeing what was out there and then COVID hit and money that we had saved up, we had to use solid searching for about six months, if not more. <laughs> How does it make you feel to do this continuous solid searching for the, for the last six months? Oh, it's a nightmare. It's just distress, isn't it? And with everything else, uh, with work, child, you know, and everyday life, to try and remember to get on and search every day and just constantly, it is, it's stressful and it's, it's just a worry. Like, are we gonna find something? Um, you know, something suitable. Like my, my daughter's um, suffered from a chronic cough from a young age, from about six months. So for us, like we're lucky with this place, it's not damp with our budget. We found that a lot of them on the lower scale are quite dated and damp and I, it's not a risk that I can take with their health to, to do that. So that kind of narrows it down a bit and obviously we have a dog. The Citizens Advice Bureau, a report came out and 35% mm -hmm. of properties who they were speaking to their clients did have mould and damp. I mean, yeah. does that surprise you? No, no, it doesn't. And um, I think, what was it? It was passed, uh, I remember the article, what was it, July 2020? It was released that regulations were going to be put in place. That's like, what, over a year ago? And I'm still seeing properties like that. I know people are still living in properties like that. And how do you feel being a local, you've, you're raising a family, mm -hmm. you're providing money for the, for the states here with, with, through your income and you've got a, a job and so does your partner, that you're finding properties that are just below standard? It's just crazy. There's families that earn a lot less than us and are struggling massively. And you're right, we work hard, we pay into this island. So why is it that we feel we're being pushed out of it? There's just nothing affordable for us. And it's sad, it's sad, because you know, people are working hard. Some people are working a lot of jobs just to put a roof over their head. And It feels like it's a constant battle yeah, for those constant, people. Constant, constant. And like I've said to the deputies, when does it end? I just feel like the working people are constantly being pushed to the limit in some way. Every day is just more of a struggle. I just, I just really worry about the future, the future of our uh, children and the future of this island. All I can see at the moment, throughout COVID, there was a big push for Guernsey together, but now, Where's the compassion from these landlords, uh, from the states, from people, to the people that worked hard throughout this lockdown, had, you know, no jobs, lost jobs, and, and now they can't even get a roof over their head, you know? And I just find some landlords in some instances are being greedy, and it's like a monopoly game out there. Like, people have just got a free-for-all on how much they can charge for these properties. And like I say, where does it go? Like, in a year's time, is a family home going to be four to five thousand pounds a month? because unless the wages are gonna go up, people just can't afford that. It's been going on two years and it's been silent. What's the response been like from friends, family, from maybe other islanders who've reached out to you? The stories I've heard are heartbreaking. It, it is quite sad and it is quite crazy how many people are actually homeless currently in Guernsey.